All right. You saw the thumbnail. You saw one of my Acras broke down. And it, it's kind of strange because the, the renter who was renting it, she pulled to a quick trip. She went in to get some. She came back out. The car wouldn't start. Uh, it won't turn over. Have no clue what's wrong with it. So, incidentally, this car was on the hit list. This is arguably the worst car I have in my fleet. And I was like, once I get the title, I'm just going to sell it trade out of it and move up <clears throat> and I'm just going to rent it out in the meantime and what what is funny is it's an Acura this isn't supposed to happen so this is deeply influencing my new intake process this is one of the reasons that I stopped buying cars <clears throat> one I exhausted the uh, budget and two I wanted to reset Currently, I have four cars down. The Camry with the bumper hanging off. Apparently, Toyota sent them the wrong bumper, so it's not going to be ready today. They're shooting for tomorrow. <clears throat> I would not be surprised if this is Friday. The Mini, it's hard to work on. The Mini has been in the shop since last Thursday. Last Thursday. And... Another Camry that I bought, which I later found out was in an accident, the trunk doesn't close. The trunk will randomly open up when you're driving. So the Mini, the Camry, the other Camry, and that other Camry, depending upon how this trunk issue goes, because the AC's cold, it works, it's fine. Don't know if I'm going to keep that in the fleet. And I got a BMW, which I feel needs a battery. I feel that's going to be a simple thing. It's fit simple because it's doing the same thing that the Range Rover was doing that just simply needed a battery. So I feel that it needs a battery. Get that fixed and get it back out. So currently I have 16 cars rented out. And I would have 20 rent it out except for the mercedes because i'm getting ready to take the mercedes off of hire car essentially i'm here right now at the quick trip waiting on the tow truck driver and this is going to be part of this business i see this right now because like like i said the bmw like i said i think it just needs a battery that's going to be kind of cheap quick fix and I have no clue to what's going on with this. I have no clue to what's going on with this Acura. It just won't start. And I'm gonna take it someplace that I've never taken it before that I have it looked at. So essentially, we are four cars down on the fleet. And I feel that two will be back in the fleet today i was promised the mini today i feel the bmw is going to be a quick fix so i'll get those two back and then maybe get the camry back um thursday friday and th th this is really really intriguing because hold on i am thinking well, what I'm going to do once I start buying cars again. And essentially, buying cars is going to be a different process because I made some mistakes and I feel that this Acura was a mistake because it's the roughest car in the fleet. And I've been staying away from cars that were like super rough, had issues, but it was an Acura. So I went with that. I went with the name brand name and I got bit in the butt because this is the same car that the battery died on that I had to have a locksmith because this key which isn't the original key keys are a big big issue this key will not open up the door it will start the car but it will not open up the door 
And when the battery died, this didn't work. So what I am anticipating is to have two to three cars back in circulation this week and we are trending we've already made almost 10,000 this month and that's with a lot of cars not going out for the majority of the month so I'm looking at next month at being a fifteen to twenty thousand dollar month just kind of depends because like I said um, I got it. it's on my phone so we're at 10,000 for the month and we've got seven days left so we will see what we'll do but I, I have a feeling we're gonna hit 12 or 13,000 and then next month we're gonna hit 15 maybe 20 and then in August and this is what I'm waiting on in August I should have all of the titles so I can get rid of my problem cars and trade out of those SUVs because you know I've had some yard bird say oh he lying about the titles he financed these cars this BMW it took me almost two months to get the title the Porsche I got the title in like two and a half weeks and that that's the big hold up and it's frustrating because when you want to make moves and you're waiting because like uh i'm waiting on the title for the bmw x5 because i got a renter who consistently runs late i'm gonna call that car in and i'm gonna get rid of it and i'm gonna get two cars and i'm gonna test out my new intake process my new intake process do a car fax i'm gonna stay away from cars that have been wrecked because here's the thing let's say you have a car that's wrecked and it's drivable but it's going to have little irritating annoying quirks like the trunk just popping up when you're driving or the door may not close or the sunroof may be messed up or it could be anything because when a car gets hit and the frame twist this moves a lot of things out of place like your doors may not close properly um there was one car that i did research on before i bought it well i didn't buy it because it was in an accident and i noticed when i was test driving it that the sunroof was really really quirky because sometimes it would open sometimes it would close and that car was in a major accident so i'm staying away from cars who were in major accidents um so this is the car rental business like i have 21 cars and it's damn near a full-time job and i see these people and you're talking about renting cars as passive income i start laughing i've only been doing this seven weeks and i can tell you it ain't passive income maybe if you have one or two cars maybe three cars okay i don't think that's going to be that much but once you get to i started having these problems at about 10 cars and one of the things that's annoying is when you have a car that's down you're losing money and you're spending money because it's going to cost money to get the car fixed and while it's being fixed it's not generating any revenue because right now if my cars were not issued i would have 20 cars rented out 20 and i, I i'm looking forward to that because essentially you know we're in that testing phase we're in that um learning phase and i would love to have a month where i have because my estimates is if i have a month with my current fleet with my current fleet and they all stay rented out that's like twenty four thousand with the current fleet and um one what, what i'm going to do is trade out of these suvs into because essentially I could trade out of these SUVs and get two cars I can rent out for 55 bucks a day, which is better than renting one car out for $70 a day. Because essentially, uh, when the SUVs were at 100 bucks a day, they just sat. No, you know, and I'm, I, I kept playing with the price. I moved it from 
um, 100 to 90 to 80, and at 70, they rent it out. And they can make money because at $70, um, they will make what they cost within a year if they stay rented out. But what I'm finding out is the BMWs are a big, big win on hire car. I, I am the only one that has multiple BMWs on hire car in Atlanta. And here's something else too. Hire car has 2,000 registered uh, people who rent cars from the platform, right? Currently, there's 280 cars on the platform. Now, I would say probably 100, maybe 200 to rent it out. I don't know, because essentially, once the car is rented, it leaves the platform, so you don't know. And But I would estimate, because when I joined, there was 16 pages. And now there are 14 pages. So there's 20 cars per page. So that's 40 cars that I know. And out that 40, I've got 16 that are rented out out of that 40 that I know. So we would say that, um, let's go ahead and say there's a 200 cars rented out, which still leaves 1,500, almost 1,600 people who are registered and new people are signing up every day. So I'm pretty confident in this business model and I'm starting to talk to my renters because right right now I'm on Fulton Industrial and it's been a minute since I've been over here. It was going back down memory lane. Uh, there was some warehouses I used to buy furniture from. There's uh, Pacific Importers, Titan Importers, and there was another one. They're all over here. And I actually saw some homeless people today, which is something I typically don't see. And I saw, I don't know, because even when I was down and out, I worked two, three jobs. I don't know what it is in a person to make you stand on the side of the road and ask for money. I don't know what it takes to get to that point. I have no clue to what it takes to get to that point. And um, I never want to find out. Because there was one guy and someone narked on him because the cop showed up, which means someone called it in because the cop called him. He, he was, and the guy, he was a little, he was an older man in great shape. Dude had abs. You know, he was in great shape. He had abs. He had a funny little walk like he was a little cripple and a cop called him over and he did this little walk over and I don't know what happened because I, I went to my destination. But also I'm at this quick trip on Fulton Industrial and it is mad full of Amazon drivers who are getting gas and snacks and stuff, which lets me know there's an Amazon center around here somewhere. It's around here somewhere because literally there are 40 Amazon delivery drivers with their little gray vans and stuff. So there's clearly um, an Amazon distribution center around here somewhere. I don't know where it is. But, you know, I was in there, I was looking at the quick trip and I was just in there, you know, got me a little soda, got me a little soda. And I noticed that you know, this business is bringing me in contact with the people I used to serve in the storage auction business. Because essentially, I don't run into these kind of people in my normal daily walk. I mean, Sandy Springs is so different. Like, we don't, I think we have like two homeless people who don't ask for money. They just do whatever homeless people do. And uh, I and actually I haven't seen them in a minute. I don't know where they are. And I was in this quick trip, and I started to see the people that I used to be. These folks. That's who I was. I was working 
date labor ready um labor pool and i was these people that's who i used to be i was these people in quick trip getting some snacks and stuff from working some really hard job um a lot of these people in here work really really hard and get paid the least that's who i used to be i remember one job i went out on and man we were in like fairburn we were like way out it took 45 minutes to get to the job location which we did not get paid for travel time and we got there and essentially we we had to go on top of this five-story building and we were putting tar and gravel on the roof and i at one point was running the gravel machine to um move it up there and then at some point they moved me to the roof and i was running the tar machine because essentially we were putting tar down and putting gravel on top of the tar and it was hot i mean i'm talking about so hot you just break out in the sweat walking around then when you start working the sweat just literally pours out of you and then um we used to take these breaks about every two hours and we would go under the shade tree drink a bunch of gatorade and that that job went on for literally a week it went on for literally a week and um it was crazy. It, it, it was crazy how this job was so hard. It was hard work. It was hot work. It was sweaty work. When I went home, my clothes were drenched. I smelled really, really bad. And I did that for a week. Hot, sweaty, physically exhausting work. And that's what these people are doing. These Amazon drivers, they're in and out, in and out, in and out, in the heat, in the in the rain, in the cold. They're working their asses off. And Amazon is trying to get more out of them. And I'm just sitting there thinking, because these are the people that I will be serving. Uh, the girl who rented the Acura, she drives Uber at night. And it, it, it's just like, I, I'm telling you, Uber and Lyft drivers, the night shift, you can make some money and you have less traffic to deal with. But yeah, I'm waiting on this tow truck driver. Then I got to take it to this auto place, turn it in. And I feel I'm going to get two of my cars back this week. Maybe today, maybe today, get two of them back. And essentially I got people waiting on them. So this is the downside of the business because I gotta create protocols for when this happens, when it's not me. Like essentially I'm gonna go out, buy a phone, and this is gonna be the hire car phone because my phone was ringing at like six o'clock this morning, right? I was just like, what? Wait a minute, wait a minute. And I don't answer my phone that early or that late. But what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have a dedicated phone for this business and I'm gonna go pick it up in the office in the morning and at 6 p.m. I'm gonna put leave it in the office and whatever happens between 6 p.m. and when I go back for that phone will be contained on that phone. Because literally I have people calling me. My phone has not run rung this much since I was doing the Craigslist protocols. That's the last time that I could literally remember my phone ringing virtually every 30 minutes. I mean, so uh, I will probably do that tomorrow because I'm wrangling cars today. But essentially what I'm learning is you once you put the car on the platform and once it rents out the first time, Renting it out the second time is much easier, and that's the algorithm working for you. So um, I'm going, I've got some tricks I've learned 
already. And this tow truck driver is gonna have a hell of a time getting this car. I already see that. It's, it's gonna be kind of crazy. Um, so we will see how they're gonna do that. And then um, this is the car rental business that virtually no YouTuber talks about. I got my cars on Turo. I got my cars on Hire Car. And it's, it's all rainbows and stuff because like this car, I'm getting rid of. As soon as I get the title, I may put it on Craigslist for 5,000 bucks and blow it out and just get rid of it. Uh, because it's been nothing but problems for me starting with this clone key. This isn't the original key. This is a problem. This key does not open up the door. And this is part of my checklist because essentially when I buy a new car in the future, I'm going to have to check and make sure that the keys open up the doors. I'm going to have to check the trunk. I'm going to have to get on the ground and check the fender. I'm going to have to do a car fax, make sure it wasn't an accident. If it's been in a major accident, it's immediately a no-go because if it's been in a major accident and like I had a car where someone literally traded it in because it had a it had a bumper issue much like the Camry and instead of fixing it they just traded it in and put some tie downs on it fortunately that was like a $200 fix because they were able to clamp it back on but you know I'm beginning to learn because essentially I'm going to have to move my price point up. You know, I, I see it in the comments and I love you guys, but some of you have no clue to what you're talking about. Like the maximum you should spend is $4,000 for a car for a hire car. Let me tell you what you're going to get for $4,000. You're going to get a car with 200 and some thousand miles on it. It's going to be rough. Right now in the current environment, it's going to be you might luck up and get one here and there, a good car for 4,000, but trying to scale a car rental business and buying multiple cars per month, that's gonna be very, very challenging. It's gonna be really hard to find a car for $4,000 with less than 200,000 miles on it that hasn't been beaten up. This Acura, I got a 2005 Acura with less miles than this one and it was this car has been beat up this car has been beat up you want to know how i can tell how a person's been treated the car this is what i've been finding out when they have lost the keys this car has been beat up typically any car that i've been able to get two keys for where the owner kept up with both keys they usually kept up with the maintenance this key is a big indicator of what you're gonna be dealing with. The fact that I don't have the original key, that I got a clone key, this car has been beat to hell, that tells me a lot. So essentially, I'm gonna be looking at keys much harder. If like, it doesn't come with two keys, I'm gonna scrutinize that car even more. Because, like me, I got two keys for this BMW. I've got two keys for the Porsche. When I sold my um, Audi, I had two keys. And when I traded in my other Porsche, I had two keys. Keeping up with two keys ain't that damn hard, man. But let's look at the personality of the person who can't keep up with two keys. I guarantee you, they if they can't keep up with two keys, they didn't keep up with the maintenance. I guarantee you they didn't keep up with the maintenance. And that's a big, big issue. Big, big issue. So, you know, we're gonna move the price point up to 10 to 15,000, which incidentally, I may keep some of my current fleet. I'm getting rid of the Range Rovers because the Range Rovers draw a certain kind of person. So I have, um, to have four Range Rovers and a BMW. I may actually keep the BMW. It's just, 
because I know I, it, it's so tempting because um, if I move, because essentially this is my thought process on keeping the BMW. If I can move that car to a hundred bucks a day and it stays rented out, I'll keep it. If I can't move it up to a hundred bucks a day um, and it stays rented out, I'm getting rid of it because I can take that same BMW money that I put in that and get two cars that I can rent out for 55 bucks a day. So we're gonna see, because it's gonna be easier to rent out a $55 a day car versus a $100 a day car. Just way easier. I got um, a car for $60 a day. That's the top of the line BMW I have. It's a 550. It is sweet, um, 60 bucks a day. And then I have another 530, relatively new, renting out for 55 bucks a day. So I know that those cars will rent and they will rent quickly. And essentially when a car is just sitting with me, it's not making money. But fortunately, I only have one car payment, one car payment. So I may end up keeping that BMW because that BMW I can put on Toro. And you know, I'm gonna have two fleets. I'm gonna have two fleets. I'm gonna have a hard car fleet. I'm gonna have a Toro fleet. And you wanna know why? This never fails. If I have someone on Toro who rents the car, then I'll have someone on hire car who wants it. If I have someone on hire car who rents the car, I'll have someone on Toro who wants the car during the same damn time period. It keeps happening. I actually had to take uh, one of my Range Rovers off of Toro because it kept getting booked even though I had it snoozed. And you know, so I'm going to build a Toro fleet kind of silently and I'm going to have a hard car fleet because that keeps happening, man. That, that, that It's annoying as hell. It's like, why do you guys want the car at the same time? What is going on? And this is something else. I, I call it the convergence of events. Have you ever noticed like you will have absolutely nothing going on then everything will break loose at once and that i'm finding this out so i'm gonna have to have two distinct fleets one for toro one for hire car and essentially if i have a car on toro that isn't working out i know i can put it on hire car and it'll go out so uh, essentially the range rovers i've got two titles for the range rovers so I got one that's on the month rental. I have a feeling this guy's gonna rent it out for another month. I don't know why, I just have a feeling. And if he rents it out for another month, that's gonna instantly put me at 14K for the month on hire car, if he does that. So, um, you know, it is interesting. But this is the car rental business. Like, fortunately, I'm a YouTuber. So I have the time to wrangle cars and handle stuff like this. I gotta take this chick strollers back once the tow truck gets here. And this is something else too. Tow trucks never show up when they say they're gonna show up. Uh, I had, the first time I had this car towed, I had to call one, two, three, five tow companies. And the last tow company, I happened to reach someone who was just in the area, just in the area. And once I get through this video, I may call another tow company because see, this waiting around, waiting for them to show up is annoying. It's hella fire annoying because essentially I got stuff to do. And um, it's hot out here in this sun. And this is probably the busiest quick trip I've ever seen. I mean, it is constant flow of traffic in and out of here, but we may end up keeping the BMW and we may keep the Range Rover if it stays rented because here's something else I learned from the storage auction business. When it's hitting, don't disturb your groove. So if I get the Range Rover back and uh, like there's one I'm getting rid of, there's three that are definitely going bye-bye. And uh, that's the one that Play a player rent it for the single mom. That one's going bye bye. And the other ones, because essentially those two are like $30,000 worth of vehicles that I can get three or four vehicles for that money and put.
put them at lower price points and rent them out quicker and make more money. So those three are definitely gone. This is gone. The mini is probably gone on the hit list because I could trade that mini on the nice Acura because um, it cost me 10,000. So I can trade it in easily for nine and get me a nice Acura um, or a nice Camry. The Camry stay out. So it just really depends on what I got going on, what I'm doing. But we will be shifting the fleet during these next two months. And um, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's interesting because one of the things that you don't see on YouTube is how to buy cars for your Turo fleet and your hire car fleet. You got to buy a car. Like once again, I love you guys to death, but a lot of you have no clue to what you're talking about. Um, a $4,000 car, because this is one, you know, I've had hire car renters tell me this time and time again. When I had an issue with one car, the guy's like, what else you got to rent? They don't want to rent from anyone else. There's a lot, there's, there's some, there's some bigger players that have relatively new cars on hire car, but a lot of the individual, cause I'm like, I'm not a whale yet. Because once I get to 100 cars, I'll be a whale. But I am between the whales and the regular people. I'm right there in the middle with 20 cars. And what they're finding out, because one guy was like, you know, he was renting the car from a guy. The car kept breaking down. The guy never got the car fixed. And he said, what I like about you is you get these things fixed. Because uh, I took the Camry in to get the trunk. Because I have an operating budget for these things. I have literally $25,000 to fix cars on the Wells Fargo secured credit card. And that's what the tow is going on. And essentially my first month, because I just got the card, I got like a 60 day float to get that paid off before I have to start paying any interest. And next month, I feel I'm gonna do 15 to 20,000. And that's gonna dig me out of a lot of, like I said, uh, the cars that I bought and paid too much for, I'm not going to be able to sell them and get the taxes back or the dealer fees. So next month, I will have all the repair money back. My insurance isn't that bad. It's 1200 bucks on 20 cars. I have the finance car on my personal insurance policy because it's finance. I have to have full coverage on it. And so end of July... I will be ahead. And then August, I should even be further ahead. So end of August, I should have money to buy three more cars, maybe four more cars, just kind of depends. And then, um, yeah, we, we, we'll start cooking with gas. I, I figure by December, I should have 40 cars, 40, 40 45, maybe 50 um, so we will see, we will see. But at that point, once I get a fleet of 40, that's going to be 45 to 50,000 a month. And we will be very close to halfway to our point. Cause the goal is to get to hundred K. Okay. Then the next month we'll probably do 110. And then that 10,000 goes in my pocket. Then next month, we'll probably do 120. Then that 20,000 goes in my pocket. And then the next month, we'll probably do 130. Then that money goes in my pocket. So literally in three months, um, I'll do like 60,000 in my pocket. And that whole first, next 10 months, I will get my 300K back. And since I've invested 300K, I don't have to pay taxes on that. So I will be able to slide that money in my pocket with no taxes because it's just recouping my original investment. And then after I get my 300,000 back, then I will have to start paying taxes on certain aspects of the business. So we will see. Me and my CPA will have to sit down and talk about that. But essentially, this is where we are. This is what we're doing. 
and look out for corporate papers. I'm gonna launch that in July. Now, corporate papers, what we're gonna do is take your business, we're gonna take one student's business and we're gonna tear it apart, go over it, and give them guidance on things they need to do because one of the things I found out with the corporate toolbox is I got a lot of people in the corporate toolbox who have not filed for the LLC. They've not filed for the LLC. They've not, they, they, they're just there and they're getting lessons, but they're not taking actions. So the corporate papers is going to be an action-based program. You got to take action because, you know, if I give you guidance, you don't take action. I'm not going to mess with you anymore because I can tell you what to do, but if you don't do it, and I'm, I'm out here showing you starting a business from scratch in the industry I know nothing about. And by August, I will be making more money than 90% of the Turo and Hire Car people on YouTube. In August, let's say, let's just go ahead and say May, June, July, August. Four months, I'll be making more money than the majority of people on YouTube talking about Turo and Hire Car. Four months. Four months, and we're, we're going to talk about that. So that's all I got for you, animals. Uh, once again, uh, don't get into the art of holding. Wait until I get the corporate papers together, and then you get into that. So that's all I got for you guys. I will see you guys in the next one.